What's up, y'all? We are back. This is episode 22 of the Nationals Rangers Out of the Park Baseball 24 series. Um, I'm dropping an episode today, but um, this is the 30th. Um, very busy week and a half or so. Um, got back from Florida. Uh, kind of lost steam. Uh, then my birthday was this weekend, so I didn't really have any time to record. Um, so that's why uh, this has been slowing down. Probably will continue to, you know occasionally put out content until the new game comes out but um yeah I, this is like a pretty dead period for the game uh it seems like you know views wise and everything and you know people just I, I know there's a lot of people that are interested but um overall you know the interest isn't as strong as it is when baseball season is going on or maybe um early in the off season but I mean, i'm still gonna release stuff it's just um i'm kind of burned out at this point <laughs> i'm doing a bunch of crap right now so um yeah, anyway, into the series. Uh, it's June 16th. Uh, the Rangers are 38-28. and 28. Um, It's been, there's been a lot of good, a lot of bad, and I, I think I've realized something about myself that um, I think I've, I, I don't emphasize offense enough. Um, it, it feels like a lot of my teams, I kind of try to get by by putting really good defensive guys out there and, um, you know, maybe sacrificing some offense for a good defense. And, you know, that's good to some extent, but I think I've gone way too far in the other direction that I kind of, for, for example, like I, I put Chris Sarver, oh, well, I guess he wasn't my starter at the beginning of the year, but Eric Bloomer, um, first of all, it, we'll get to his regression in a second, but <laughs> like he should not be starting in left field for me. The, the left field should be a position of offense. Uh, I kind of went with defense with Bloomer, even though he should have been a good offensive player. Um, we had a recent scouting report. His contract dropped from a 55 to 50. Uh, his potential dropped from 60 to 50, which is just devastating. Um, you know, this is from dropping all the way down from a 65, just like middle of last year. Um, you know, even at the beginning of the off season, it was at a 65. Now it's down to a 50. So he's a kind of useless player at this point, uh, which is absolutely devastating. There's no reason that should have happened. He had a really good year last year. Um, <clears throat> it just sucks. So we have like a bunch of league average hitters, um, you know, and then Seager has been good and CJC has been good as well. Um, this is all levels. There you go. CJC has been awesome, um, but he did get hurt. He fractured his finger. Um, he lost four to five weeks, uh, wound up being like six weeks probably, although he had a short rehab, so maybe not, but anyway, yeah, we, we our offense has really struggled. Stone Russell's taken a huge step back after, um, a promising end to the season last year, uh, but it hasn't, it hasn't come together this year. Um, Eric Bloomer has been a total black hole, uh, 169 WRC plus, um, yeah, he, he's been he's been really bad. Um, Herman Ortiz has been fine. You know, I'll take a 92 WRC plus from a guy who plays good second base uh, and gets on base a ton. Um, and Chris Sarvers, you know, he's been pretty, you know, pretty substantially better than Bloomer uh, this season. And, um, yeah, I'm playing Sarver a bunch at the moment. Um, then you go through the rest of the outfield. Like, Zach Veen's been, you know, I, I like this production. I wasn't expecting a ton when we got him um i just wanted him to steal a bunch of bases and he has he's on pace to steal 30 uh, about a league average bat you know he hasn't been the issue and then joe mccall uh on the other side has been a better league average bat as well uh, i think this can improve his walk rates way down from last season and i think if that jumps up to 10 percent um or so uh, he can you know put in a really good season here he only get two home runs last year that's crazy he has five so far this year, but two home runs. Um, yeah, then like Edwin Arroyo, you know, he's doing his thing as a league average hitter, really good defender. Steve Crow has been amazing, uh, 111 WRC plus, uh, you know, basically what he did last year. He's doing it again, uh, which we will take. Um, and then Brock Daniels, uh, he's been playing, uh, you know, a lot over the around the field. Um, although he, was he hurt? I believe he got hurt. No, he didn't. Okay. I lied. I don't know why I'm not playing him anymore. I think something happened. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to throw him in the lineup a little bit more. Uh, I want him playing every fourth for Russell's and maybe every third. Um, 
And then, yeah, that's good. His defense isn't really good enough to play second base, I don't think. Uh, I mean, he could, but it's a little sketchy. Um, you know what? Let's play him at, just play him every second against righties. Um, but yeah, I mean, Brock's been pretty solid when he's been out there. Um, so he hasn't been an issue. And then Don Cohn, in a little bit of playing time, has been awesome. So yeah, the offense has been uh, pretty underwhelming. We're like middle in the pack uh, and run scored and um, pretty much every category. We're middle of the pack. Um, so we're going to have to look to upgrade that as the deadline comes along. Uh, the pitching's been, uh, you know, the starters have been good. The relievers have been pretty bad. Um, we'll start with the good, you know, Dolander, he's just doing his thing. You don't have to talk about him too much. Uh, we brought in Luis Castillo last season, had a really good year this year, uh, following it up with a really good one, uh, as well, maybe even better. Uh, you know, the, the strikeout to walk is still not that impressive, but he's not giving up home runs and he's pitching to our defense, which has been really good. Uh, then Jake Eater, big pickup, uh, this off season. I don't think we gave up a ton to get him. Oh, no, we go. Okay, yeah, we give Gillespie, who is a good prospect. Um, crushing in high A. Uh, for some reason, they have him there. Not surprising. You know, we also got this guy, uh, Blazius, who's made his way up to AAA this season after crushing AA. Uh, so we're not too upset about that. Uh, but yeah, Eater's been awesome. Uh, ERA under three. The, you know, the sh home runs, walks, uh, strikeouts all look good. So he's gotten off to a good start. Phil Wick, um, there's been some good, some bad. Uh, he's been hot and cold, I think, all season. Um, not striking out as many guys as I would like. Uh, but hopefully as this stuff continues to improve as he ages, uh, that will improve as well. Uh, but yeah, he's he hasn't been an issue. Uh, too bad. Uh, and then Logan Allen's taking a big step back. Uh, you know, walking a few more guys. Um, everything else looks pretty good, so if he if can get the walks down to, you know, two and a half like he had last year, um, I think he can, you know, bring this ERA under four. Uh, but then in the bullpen, man, it's it's not been good. We've had to throw a bunch of guys into the fire. Uh, Steven Cruz has really struggled in the reliever spot, or in the closer spot. Um, check out his game log. Like, he's just had ton of blow up games like two runs here give two home runs four runs here in two thirds of an inning um just giving up a bunch of runs he has not been good uh the walks are for some reason at five and a half uh we brought him back on the qualifying offer this this season so he's a free agent after the season um you know was good last year i think there's still reason to think that if he gets his home runs down gets the walks are in control uh, he can return to his excellence, but it's not been a good first half for him. Um, Joe Jimenez and Cole Henry haven't been an issue, but, you know, haven't really lit the world on fire either, which is something this bullpen really lacks at the moment. Um, Luis Frias, who was a guy we got in trade in the offseason with Oakland, uh, basically got him for nothing. Uh, he hasn't really returned dividends yet. Um, you know, still early enough that we'll give him a shot, but, you know, as we approach the deadline here, uh, you know, we're going to have to look to upgrade if we want to make a real run. Uh, then Mark Church has been solid. Um, you know, maybe a few too many home runs, but overall repeating about what he did last year um, as a, you know, sixth guy out of the bullpen. Uh, then Evan Reifert, a uh, good season for him. Uh, we picked him up last season in a trade with Houston. Um, brought him back on a pretty expensive arbitration deal, but he's been good. Uh, no problem with him. Then Seth Lonsway. Um, a guy who's out of options, so he's had to stick on the team this whole year. Um, you know, the I think the, the home runs, walks, Ks look pretty good. You know, his FIP is pretty reasonable. Um, but, yeah, he's had a couple blow-up games here to inflate his ERA to almost five. Uh, so we don't love that. And then uh, this guy, Leo Leotis, um, he was a third-round pick by this team way back in the day. Um, I don't know if he was drafted as a starter or a reliever. I'm sure my scout doesn't go back that far. Um, you know, he, he was kind of one of these guys who blew up um, around when we took over. So, um, but yeah, he's he's uh, made a couple appearances in the majors. Uh, was pitching well in AAA, so we called him up. Um, as for other guys who have been up, let's see. 
Uh, Guerrero got a little bit of run at the beginning of the year. He was just not really great, uh, although it, we didn't give him a fair shot, really. Um, I don't think a ton of these guys. They're not. Ooh, this guy's killing it. All right, I got to call Mel Jean up. Um, yeah, he had a good season last year, too. Yeah, we really haven't had a, a ton of turnover in this bullpen. Uh, maybe we could look to do that as we move forward in the year. But yeah, that's like the mid-season review. We're about, what is that, 76 games in? 66 games in? 66 games uh, into the season here. Um, you know, we're, we're in prime position to get a playoff spot at this point, but we're not even halfway through. So uh, we're going to keep simming. Uh, also, Mark Henderson uh, is... I have concerns about this pitch mix, of course. Uh, I've made that very clear, but uh, he's been killing it in AAA. I have him as a reliever. Uh, I see him as a reliever, but he may be trade bait if we can try to get a you know a controllable piece this deadline to uh, to keep this team going. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll keep moving forward. Uh, I'm sure we'll have something to update. Actually, we start a series with Washington here. Uh, let's go through that on camera. Washington this year lost a bunch of guys. Um, and now they're 35 and 30. Uh, so just like that, uh, things aren't looking so great for them. They weren't able to re-sign. I don't know if I went over this. Uh, they weren't able to sign, able to re-sign their two guys. Um, what the hell is even his name? The shortstop. Um, yeah, Marcelo Mayer wound up going to the Cubs. I don't know if I even mentioned this. Um, in next year's game, I'm going to be better with going through and uh, taking my time with these these sims because uh, I I know I like to rush around a little bit and not really go over the the state of the league but yeah he wound up going to the Cubs on a pretty big deal <laughs> eight years um, so they lost him and they lost James Wood no he's still here oh they wound up giving him a big deal okay they locked him up four years a pretty reasonable number I mean. <sighs> Besides the ratings issues, I mean, this dude has been nothing but play like an all-star uh, since the save started. Um, you know, he was a total beast with me. Um, in the last two years, uh, you know, last year he was really good for Washington. And then uh, this season, not so great, but hopefully he can bounce back. Um, yeah, they locked him up. I mean, the, the ratings are just very bizarre that he's such a good player. <laughs> but he is. Um but anyway, um, yeah, they lost. Oh, they lost Nola. That's who it was. Yeah. Um, so Nola went somewhere and signed a big contract. Um, so now they're stuck with Cannon Handy, former first overall pick, uh, having a good bounce back year for them. Uh, Paul Skeens, former second overall pick in that same draft. And Talik Wu. Um, Namala. Man, I wish I got to have Namala on my team. This, this is a guy I loved. I, uh, you know, he got all the way to the majors with me in 2020, 2028, I guess. Um, then I got fired. So <laughs> I didn't really get to see him, but we gave him a huge bonus back in the day. Uh, Raheem Lucky was a guy I drafted. Uh, he's turned into a total stud on pace for seven war. Yeah, that just sucks. But all right, let's go to the series in Washington. Let's see if we can win this. So we win three, two game one. It looks like three-run home run from Brock Daniels against uh, Johan Duran. Good start from Allen, uh, and Jimenez gave up a run, but he picks, winds up picking up the win. Uh, but the only damage was Brock Brock Daniels there in the bottom of the ninth. Um, so game two, Luis Castillo on the mound against his former team. Um, and it looks like something happened here in the seventh. A couple of runs given up by Cole Henry and Castillo. Um, so we drop game two, looking to take the series here with Jake Eater on the mound. And we lose 11-8, to eight, four runs in the top of the ninth. Man, Steven Cruz, holy crap, man. <laughs> I think i got to pull him out of the closer spot. He's been brutal. Uh, Jake Eater, a horrible start as well. Um, the bullpen minus Cruz was really good, but yeah, I don't think we can keep trotting him out there. I'm going to go with Evan Reifert. Uh, he's been really good. Um, you know, better than any other reliever I have in this pen at the moment. Did Luis Frias give up? I don't know. 
yeah, we need we need Cruz to bounce back, but I can't keep throwing him out in the ninth inning at this point. But yeah, we're gonna keep simming. We'll be back uh, when uh, we have an update. All right, so we're making a pretty big trade here. It's June twenty seventh, still early, but um, I just want to capitalize on some value of uh, some guys that that uh, maybe didn't have that much before, or you know, might not have a ton moving forward. So Mike Henderson. I've talked about him and how I think the, you know, the three pitches being a fastball changeup sinker might not work. This he very well could be an awesome pitcher, um, but as of now, I'm okay giving him up in a trade, um, and we need some more offense. So we'll get to that in a second. Then we're giving up Steven Cruz, and man, it just hasn't worked out for him this season. Uh, unfortunately, it just keeps getting worse. And you know, he's going to be a good player, uh, I'm sure for them. But he's a free agent after the year anyway. Had a lot of value. So a guy I'm cool giving up. Um, the other big piece here is Stone Russell, um, who, you know, is a catcher, I guess, uh, but it has been playing DH for me. And um, even last year, like a 108 WRC plus, not really cutting it. This year he's at 85. Um, some of that could be Babbitt related, but also, you know, he had a 337 Babbitt last year. So maybe, maybe this is who he is at this point. Um, you know, had a good 2029, but uh, you'll see the guy we're getting in return. I'm not, I, I think it's an upgrade regardless. Um, then we're going to Luke Jacobson, uh, who started the year for us and was really bad. I uh, sent him to the minors. Um, Give it up Joe Wheeler, uh, a 22 year old who's kind of interesting. Um, and then Austin Nye, a 25 year old uh, starting pitcher prospect. Um, so in return, we're, we're going to the Giants. So they signed Corbin Carroll this offseason. Um, and it looks like they're having some buyer's remorse early. Um, he, they got him for a seven-year deal. Um, and, yeah, they were looking to get out from under it, kind of. So uh, I had to throw in a bunch of guys, but they're going to eat half of this deal, uh, which, you know, feels a little cheesy, but at this point in the save, I don't care that much. Um, so they're going to eat. We're going to be paying him thir- about 13 for the next three seasons. Um, he has an opt-out somewhere in here. Uh, and then, you know, it'll it'll de-escalate from there um, down to, like, $9 million in the last year. So, uh, Carroll's still a really good player. Uh, you know, has been a total stud in the save. On pace for the potentially Hall of Fame. Uh, we'll see. But having a really good first half of the year for the Giants. We're also getting Nate Marecci. Um, huge power bat. 26 years old. Having an awesome season so far. Um, after a pretty disappointing 2030 for him, but 2029, he was great. Um, he's got some years of control left. He's only making the minimum, so he'll be our DH. So we're flipping Russell for Marecci and then basically all of these guys for Corbin Carroll, um, you know, at a very reasonable price. A guy who can play left field for us. Um, not very well, but again, I, I talked about it, you know, the last cut in that. I think I've been overvaluing defense uh, in this save, and you know, to be able to get get a real bat here in the outfield instead of a bunch of league average guys or slightly below league average guys, I think that'll be huge for this team. So we're giving up our best trade asset, Mike Henderson. Here, uh, it sucks to let him go because I would I'm I'm gonna keep tabs on him, but um, we're gonna pull the trigger on that, and our fans love those two pickups. So we'll add them to the team. We do lose Stone Russell, which, um, you know, is sad because he was one of the guys I really liked, but, you know, he, he, we'll take it. Um, so this, this puts Eric Bloomer in a tough spot. I might actually send him down to the minors. He's just, like, not useful for me right now uh, with the contact drop off, and this is definitely not the guy that I traded for from Washington. And, you know, they got Ketel Marte, who was fine for them, but... Um, it was kind of a lose-lose trade, honestly. <laughs> uh, you know, we got a good year out of Bloomer, I guess. Good year and a half, but uh, that didn't really work out. So I'd rather a Veen on here than, um, than Bloomer. So we'll add Carroll to the team. He'll play some left field for us. He, he, he'll be fine out there. Uh, he's got good error. The range is fine for left. The arm, who really cares? Um <coughs> And we'll have Veen back up uh, the corners. He's had a pretty decent year, uh, stealing a ton of bases and stuff. 
Uh, we could use a center fielder, but we have um, Alford here in the minors that I would like to give a shot to pretty soon. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll roll with something like this. Uh, I think Carroll actually slots into that leadoff spot pretty nicely. He's got a good eye, good speed, can steal some bases. Um, and we don't really have a ton of other options. Uh, I guess McCall could lead off, but I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, how has McCall's splits been? He's much better against righties in limited time, obviously. Uh, his ratings indicates he's much better against lefties. So, you know, I'm actually going to do... I'm actually going to throw a Veen out and right. Um, McCall will still play like every fourth, maybe, against righties. But uh, maybe let's do every third. But yeah, we'll, we'll put Veen out here. Um, now, what do we want to do with the lineup? I think Carroll works in that leadoff spot. Or maybe we can put... Ramon Ortiz back in the leadoff spot. Get Marecci into the five hole. Um, this lengthens the lineup a little bit. Yeah, I think I like this better. Um, that looks good. Okay, so then against lefties, we'll do Carroll will be in left. Um, Marecci at DH. Then we'll do uh, probably pretty much the same thing. We'll have McCall lead off. Um, we're actually in the five. Oh, we'll do <clears throat> Arroyo Ortiz, Sarver, Crow. That works. Okay. Then our backup center fielder. I don't love doing it, but we'll put Joe McCall out there. Um, and that looks pretty decent. I like I like how that, that looks in the lineup. Um, so we do need one more arm up in the majors now. And, you know, it, it does suck to give up our best reliever in theory, uh, especially with our already weak bullpen, but uh, we're going to give some guys a shot here. So, Manuel Heredia is a guy that I've liked. Uh, has not had a good year in AAA, but we're going to give him a shot. Although his ratings have fallen off a little bit from the last time I looked. But let's see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, we pick up Corbin Carroll. We'll keep him simming ahead um, and see how the rest of this first half goes. Okay, so we're here at the first year player draft. I'm just going to go through the first round, but holy crap. <clears throat> this is a guy. This is a guy in the draft, <laughs> uh, Mike Hole. Uh, what the what the frick, dude? <laughs> like, uh, I understand that there's some pitchers that come into the league and are pretty well developed, but holy crap, this guy's like a instant Cy Young candidate winner uh, type. So, uh, you know, congratulations to whoever gets him. I would uh, hope Philadelphia takes him, but they do not. They take a you know a fine player. See where Mike Hull goes. Is he really just going to sit here? Wow. You know, the, the draft logic. There you go. He finally goes uh, to Jacksonville, and they get an absolute steal. What, what a ridiculous. I know he's only got the 50 stamina, but who even cares at that point? Uh, he's fragile. I guess that's you know something to monitor. Um, I mean, you take the risk on that for sure. Um, so anyway, up to our pick. Um, you know, I prefer college guys, of course, so we'll go check them out first. Mike Daly. Uh, you know, David Flores could be what we need, but we could use a little more a little more pop. Uh, we are 53 and 35, by the way. Uh, we've gone on a pretty nice tear since, uh, you know, beginning of June. July has been good. Uh, Corbin Carroll's put a lot of juice into this lineup. He hasn't really hit for any power, but... Um, he's hit 333. Uh, you know, he's, pro he's provided a little juice. Um, Marecci, uh, 157 OPS plus, 122 WRC plus, uh, an absolutely abysmal BABIP so far, but, you know, you, you'd hope that improves. Um, <clears throat> yeah, things have, uh, things have stabilized. The bullpen's been a lot better, uh, surprisingly since getting rid of, um, what the hell is his name? Doesn't even matter. He's off the team. Um, let's see where our scout thinks. They think Chris Klein. I do like Chris Klein. You know, I'm gonna, maybe I'll start going with some more upside guys. I think it's worked out okay in recent drafts. I like this arm a lot, though. Duthit. Bert Duthit. You know, not a flashy, sexy upside play or anything, but... 
you know. Yeah, middle of the rotation arm. Uh, could be could be useful. Let's go to all players. Um, you know, prefer defensive versatility, of course. Um, I mean, Mike Daly's interesting, but he's 22, not that well developed. A bit concerning. I mean, I, I love me a good college or uh, high school pitcher. <laughs> Al Hugh Banks. Um, got a nice curveball, potentially. Omari Driggins. This is a, this is a sick pitcher. Um, a lefty that has a killer slider curveball and potentially change up. Does not really have a fastball, though. Uh, I would love to see how that works out. It looks like he also has some really good hitting ratings as well. Uh, and he's durable. I like Amari Driggins here. Uh, David Flores, you know, he's the high floor play. Um, he has a ton of speed. You know, I actually don't hate it, even though he's he's really stuck at second base. Um, my concern is if this contact doesn't develop, uh, he's going to be a pretty useless player. He has the 80s speed, though, 65 stealing. Ah, uh, they think... Yeah, I mean, he's going to draw a ton of walks. Going to get on base, steal a ton of bases. We'll keep looking, but he's a guy I, I, I do surprisingly like. Um, apparently, I can't scroll down. Uh, I don't know where I was. Ooh, this guy's got 75 range. Uh, okay, keep going. <clears throat> This guy's an interesting college guy. Desenzo, Sergio Flores. Wow. 70 range, 40 arm. I think that would play it short, but probably not very well. Am I going up? I'm, I'm pressing down, but it I feel like it's going up. Yeah, not a ton interesting down here. Although, Zach Christensen, uh, not looking too bad. 17 years old, long way away. Yeah, so I think I'm between that pitcher who, you know, <laughs> probably will never even debut in this series, but, or David Flores, who is the high floor play. Don't know if we need a ton of other, like, high average guys. I mean... Herman Ortiz is the weakest link in our lineup at the moment, but I still like him overall. Um, and he plays a good second base too, which you know you can't undervalue. Arroyo's also been bad at the bat, but I think we're pretty good hitting wise. I think I'd rather go with um, go with that arm there. Where was he? Not Al. Uh, it wasn't Al. It was Omari Driggins. Super interesting build. Uh, really no fastball, but three potentially elite out pitches. I know the changeup is, uh, you know, 30% likely to develop, but even if he just has a slider and curveball, with this batting profile, uh, really good speed. I mean, I think it's a fun-ass player. Uh, we're going to take him. So I'll do the rest of the draft off camera. We'll come back. All right, so we'll go through this rest of the draft really quick. Just want to go through all-star teams. Uh, not a lot to talk about. You know, we're 55 and 36, I believe. Best team in the American League. Um, yes, best team in baseball. <laughs> and we yeah, have one all-star, uh, Chase Dolander, of course, uh, having a great year once again. Maybe not his best year, but um, actually after his last start, uh He's on a much better pace, so yeah, he's a total stud. Uh, he'll make his uh, third All-Star team in as many years with us since I've taken over. Yep, um, and his fifth overall. So um, that's where we are. Uh, let's go over the draft. Um, I did this two days ago. Now uh, I'm just picking up recording um, the rest of this episode. So we took Driggins first round. Uh, I like that pick. Now we took Chris Klein as our supplemental first round pick. 
um, high school bat. Jeff Moses we took in the second round. Not a guy I would typically take. Um, you know, a first base only type, uh, but a really good batting profile potentially. He's pretty well developed for an 18-year-old and has good work ethic and intelligence. So um, if he can become a fly ball hitter, uh, he's durable. Yeah, I think he can be a, an impact bat for us one day. Um, I think this guy, David Aridono, Ar- Aridondo, I think it's how you say that name. Uh, if that's a real, I'm sure it's a real name somewhere, but you know what I mean. He's durable, uh, high school arm. We'll see what happens. Uh, if he ever even makes an appearance in the series, probably won't. Uh, then Ricky Brooks, uh, a catcher technically, but probably going to be a DH first base guy. Good bad and upside though. And Steve Green was the last guy we'll go over. Fifth rounder. Um, pretty decent outfield defense. Good upside at the bat. Um, and yeah, that's probably all we need to go over. I don't know if a lot of these guys make an impact um, in in uh, you know in the next couple seasons we're doing the save. So um, yeah, still in a dogfight with these uh, these Mariners and these Angels uh, here in the AL West. Um, the pitching staff finished fantastic to end the month. All of our guys, um, you know, Jake Eater is our worst pitcher, and uh, he's been affected by a couple blow-up games here down the stretch. Uh, he was our best pitcher as of just like a month ago. So, And Logan Allen turned it around big time uh, on a really nice string of starts. Um, and, yeah, overall things are looking good. The bullpen's really solidified. We're down to sixth in bullpen ERA. Uh, we were like – bottom half at least um as of you know a month ago so things have stabilized the offense is looking better uh, i think you know picking up corbin carroll um Marecci, i think that really helps the offense um and you know we got our guys here and uh we'll go up to the deadline here see if there's any more moves to make uh i don't know if there will be i like where our bullpen's at uh we did get this guy franco alamon uh, back from injury, so we signed him as as a free agent this off season. He was hurt to start the year. Sent him on a really long rehab assignment uh, just because I didn't have a spot in the bullpen. Um, so now he's back with the team. He's pitched five innings, um, so he'll be an arm we can use down the stretch. And then Melengi uh, has pitched super well in AAA. You know, a nine ninety nine ERA plus. Um, Pitching for the Rail Riders down there in AAA. And, uh, yeah, I want to get him some some innings up here. Uh, and, you know, the rest of the guys were, were young, mostly young. Uh, obviously, like, uh, Joe Jimenez is old. But uh, besides that, you know, we're, we're a pretty young bullpen. And um, I think, uh, okay, that's not true. Seth Lonsway's 32. Crap, I guess we're deeper into the save than I, than I thought. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going to keep moving forward. We'll go up to the deadline here. You know, I may as well do this on camera. Um, I have to sign a bunch of minor league guys. All right, maybe I'll do this off camera. We'll come back. All right, so I've simmed a few days. We've come out of the All-Star break 5-0, and uh, sweeping Oakland, giving up just one run combined in three games, and then um, the offense uh, combined for 18 runs in two games. Most of that coming in this 13-7 to win. Um, but man, uh, can we, let's talk about Chris Sarver for a second. Cause you know, coming into the year, he wasn't really in my plans to be in the starting lineup at any point, but, uh, bloomer regress and got off to a rough start. And, um, you know, we finally thrown Sarver here into the lineup full time, uh, as of June and, you know, June was rough, but man, he's had a spectacular July so far in 15 games, a two sixteen WRC plus. Um, you know, kind of his magnum opus here, four hits in this one. Um, and Corey Seager drove in four runs. He's getting hot. And, you know, I'm looking at the team right now. We're sort by WRC+. Plus. I mean, there's no real holes in this lineup. Second base is the only thing you could really debate. I still like Herman Ortiz. Um, but could we upgrade at that spot? Absolutely. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Sincere Belize... Basilace. Um, he was a 2027 first round pick. No, sorry, second round pick by the Pirates. Um, went to the Mets. We picked him up this offseason with Jake Eater for uh, Mr. Gillespie here, uh, who's still in high A. But 
uh, yeah, check out his AAA numbers. I mean, a 429 average, 180 WRC+. Plus. I just couldn't keep him down any longer. So he's up with the team. He's got some awesome outfield defense, uh, great speed, great contact ability. Uh, really my ideal, like, you know, backup outfielder here. Do not have Don Cohn backing up here. Oops. Um, yeah, he's playing a ton in center. He's playing some in right. Um, depending on the matchup, but yeah, love what we've gotten. Uh, you know, we haven't gotten a ton out of him yet, but we love what we got in AAA with him. Um, and you know, we don't really need him with Chris Sarver playing the way he is. You know, he's fourth on the team in WRC plus of full time guys. Um, you know, Marici, this is a lot of with San Fran, so really he's been our third best hitter this season. Uh, and you know, Carroll's been with uh, San Fran as well, so. You know, there's an argument to be made that he's been our best hitter uh, of guys that have been on this team all season. Um, but anyway, that's not really that relevant. So JC's probably even better. Um, but yeah, we're, we start a series with LA here. Um, I believe this is the Angels. It is. Um, so let's go through this series. You know, we're 60 and 36, absolutely cooking here in the month of July, 14 and 4. Um, and, and, you know, things are just looking good. Uh, I don't really know where we can upgrade, and there you go. Uh, an oblique strain for Corey Seager. That absolutely sucks. Um, we have Brock Daniels on a rehab assignment. Easy enough. We'll just add him to the roster. He'll slot right in where Seager was. Yeah, we lose 9-4. to four. Bad day for Dolander after two excellent starts. Um, one right before the All-Star break, one right after. Um, but not a good one here against L.A., and, okay, let's go to the lineups. Uh, I don't know if I like Brock at third. You know, would I rather have CJC over there? Um, I think that probably is better. Uh, he's a slightly better third baseman. Yeah, Daniel's... Yeah, Daniel, that's good. Um, that, that'll be good. Then against righties... Or against lefties, sorry. I think I want the Lays Basilis in there. Um, maybe Carroll slides to DH, Marecci at first. That looks pretty good. Um, we'll put Veen in the back of outfield spots. Um, and Daniels can back up first and DH. Um, let's switch this lineup a little bit. All right, so, I mean, that looks pretty good. Let's check out the trade market for a second baseman. You know, guys who could fill that role. Bobby Witt's out there. He's a little pricey. Having a really good season, though. He, I think, yeah, he's only under contract for this year, so... Yeah, there's a good chance we can get um, the Dodgers to eat some of this money. So... They really want this guy, Lusk. And, you know, I'm not opposed to giving him up uh, for, for obvious reasons, the the movement. Um, but, you know, the movement takes up to a 35 or a 40. You know, this guy's a, an all-star pitcher. But um, I guess we can work from a position of strength and see if we can deal Lusk here. Let's just see what his value is uh, on the market. Preferably looking for regulars. Um, Stanley Tucker, bring him back. I, I still like Stanley. Uh, was he a guy we drafted? I think he was, right? Yeah, 19th round pick in 2024. Uh, you know, it never really became a star or anything for us, but... Um, had a nice debut season, and then, you know couple of nice cups of coffee uh this season wasn't with me there but he had a really nice 180 plate appearance uh, season there so jackson holiday um this makes a lot of sense uh, i don't know if he's a ton of an upgrade over ortiz you know he's been middling at best uh the past few seasons with uh with colorado and baltimore but no at his peak was it was a fantastic player um and still has pretty good ratings. Making a good amount of money. 
So that's definitely an option. I don't think we'd even have to give up Lusk for that. Uh, Jacob Gonzalez is a guy I like. I, again, I don't know if he's really an upgrade, though. Adrian Santana, a good defender. I do like this guy, Bel Kazar, uh, but not having a good year. Did have a good season last year, though. But under, ooh, yikes. Yeah, they gave him a little extension there. Uh, Barrios, decent. Lane Forsyth, eh. Ooh, I like this guy, Renee Huber. Former first round pick. Crushing it in AAA. Um, not a good defender. But I honestly like this guy a lot. We could use some pop in this order. Uh, I mean, you could always use pop in the order, but we, we especially can right now. Angel Martinez, a minor leaguer. We could buy low on him. Brady House, uh... What did they, what did they do with him? <laughs> he had a couple nice seasons for us, man. Yeah, I mean his his twenty twenty seven is uh, you know pretty elite. So yeah, we left and they sent him down to Triple A where he just uh, rotted there for a season, <laughs> mashing forty nine home runs. Uh, yeah, and then he spent twenty thirty in Triple A for the Nationals again, just crushing, and then went to Philly. I mean, this is not a nothing guy that they, they got, but... Man, that sucks. <laughs> Brady House was such a good player, too, man. Like, he put the team on his back in 2027. I remember that. Um, and then 2028 had a decent season as well. Man, that sucks. They just never gave him a shot. But that's how it goes, man. Uh, not everyone can GM like I can, although not much to show for it this series. Uh, this has been pretty dreadful. Uh, Curtis Mead, not really a second baseman, but can fake it over there probably. Uh, Kevin Alcantara. I should be looking at all positions, but I'm mostly focusing on infield here. Ooh, Elias Farland, guy who's making the minimum. Not horrible, not horrible. Um, Michael Arroyo. Yeah, I'm not trading with these assholes. Um, I'd love the Rusky Brady house here, but <laughs> I bet they'll actually want real stuff. Let me just check this out really quick. It's worth a shot. Oh, they don't want anything. That'd be fun. That'd be fun to bring him in. I don't really have a spot for him on the Major League team, but um, he has an option, so... I could also stash him in AAA. I'm going to trade for him. I, I love Brady House. He, he didn't get a fair shake with the Nationals when I left. Um, so, you know, maybe like a Grant McRae with the the, um, the Stampede where I can, you know, kind of bring him back for one last one last go around at the team. And they'll eat all the contract too. So it's a no-lose situation there. So we'll pick up Brady House. Uh, you know, not the move that I wanted to make just now, but... All right, so I want to check out Jackson Holiday. I think that was the um, the guy that I liked the most. The Rockies are going to have to eat some of this deal. Oh, they already have. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> They're just looking to get rid of him. Uh, Frank Ord is not a guy I want to give up, even though he's a 20 potential for some reason. Uh, Quintero, I would definitely give up. Uh, David Aguirre scares me that he's... Ranked up here with a lot of these guys. But I'll give him up. So we'll pick up Jackson Holiday. And honestly, he'd be a perfect platoon bat with Ortiz, who is a switch hitter. He's better against lefties. That's good. <laughs> um, so where does that leave Don Cohn? Because he's had a good year in limited time. I think he probably just winds up getting sent to the minors somehow. I mean, his Babbitt's 478. Um, and then we'll we'll figure it out with Holiday and uh, Ortiz in the infield uh, backing up. You know it's not it's not ideal. <laughs> um, so we have that we have that trade. 
before I jump into anything too quick. Uh, the other guy... We also have Josh Scholey down here, who I don't... I don't know if he's really going to work out, but he is an option. Um, but I want to check out Lusk. There was... Who the heck was the other second baseman that I liked? The guy in the Mets. It's like hurting my eyes so badly to look at the screen. Alex Sosa. Interesting. Um, oh my god, where the heck are the New York Mets? Okay, here we go. So this guy Huber. Yeah, I like Huber. I don't really want to give up anyone good. You know, Huber's not like a top prospect or anything. He's 26 and routed in AAA. Um, so yeah, we can we can get him. Um, so Pat Jennifer is a guy who's really highly sought after, former 10th round pick in 2026 by this team. Um, yeah, split time between AAA and AA, kind of just a career minor leaguer. So uh, if they see something in him, I'll go for it. Uh, Renee Huber pick him up as well so another second base option but let's go back to the Rockies pick up Jackson Holiday makes a lot of sense he's a bad leader but that's okay um, I hope we can work some magic with him offensively and turn him into a good pitcher I'll uh, go up David Aguar in return so fans love that we picked up Jackson and we pick up uh, a good amount of you know roster depth here um, and, you know, unfortunately, Don Cohn, let's see if he has any value or if he would get picked up. He probably would get claimed, which is what I expect. But, I mean, for that return, I'll just, I'll, I'll take my chances. Unfortunately, I mean, he had such a good year, he doesn't get to reserve that, but, um, you know. Just kind of how it goes. So we'll send down House and Huber. Add Holiday to the team. So that'll put Holiday at second against righties. Ortiz will back up the infield. Um, and honestly, I don't hate him in the leadoff spot. Uh, career, let's see, career eight percent walk rate's not horrible. Um, yeah, let's do something like that. I think it's righties. That's fine. Uh, we'll back up P Holiday there. Um, Daniels will back up some third, and then we'll have a, uh, Ortiz over at short. So, yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, you know, we're playing a ton of platoons right now with uh, Seeker out, but hopefully that will stabilize. So, let's go up to the, um, the trade deadline here. See how our new offseason or our new uh, trade pickups go. And yeah, Houston claimed Don Cohn, unfortunately. That sucks. He had a really good season and definitely did not deserve to get waived in DFA. But yeah, um, hopefully he does some big things in um, in Houston for the horrible Astros team. Uh, you know, teaming up with his old friend Josh Young. Um, assuming that they were friends. Maybe they were. Um enemies back in the day but we win that game against LA second game of the four game set and yeah there goes Don Cone goodbye friend looks like it's a two run home run against or two run double against Eifert um, who's been forced into the closers role right now uh, I don't really love it so far in two games Holiday is one hit in eight at bats so, looking to split the series here against LA, and we do not. 4-1 to one loss. And here come the trade offers. Garrett Willock's a guy that I looked at. He has a pretty affordable team option if we wanted to go that way. Uh, they want Frank Orta. Uh, let's, let's check this out, because I am intrigued about Garrett Whitlock. Um, they're going to have to eat a little bit of the money. 
just to make this work. Um, maybe they won't. They just want a really big package. Okay. So Randy Peck probably not going to get included. Um, he's off to a good start. Yeah, I'm going to send him to A. A little aggressive. Don't love doing it. You know what? I'm not going to rush him. Uh, Dave Thornton's a guy I'd give up. Third round pick. Uh, Bellinas, probably not. Tim Schiller was our early round pick a couple years ago. Uh, Terrell Goffin are really redundant with um, the guy we have in the majors right now. All right, so we got like kind of closer, but not really. They want our top four guys. <laughs> um, so that's probably not happening realistically. Um, you know, Vaughn Grissom's out here. I know he just picked up Jackson Holiday, but I think Grissom's on a big deal. Yeah, never mind. I forgot it. They gave him another extension. My God. That was like a couple weeks ago, and they're already looking to trade him. That's uh, unfortunate for them. Colton Cowza having a pretty good year. I mean, I'm just going to get someone for the sake of getting someone. Check out pitchers. Um, Giovanni Cruz. Let's see what they're looking for him. Okay, they don't want a ton. Eric Bloomer's a guy I'd definitely part with at this point. Uh, unfortunately, it just hasn't really worked out. I don't think I'm going to give him up for a reliever, though. All right, so I really need, like, a, a lockdown closer option. Like, Jorge Juan. You know, he walks a few too many guys for my liking, but, you know, the movement's suspect. Maybe he's not the right choice. Uh, Hater's done it here, but... Um, this guy, Kai's really, really fascinating. Yeah, Brian Abreu would be a good fit. Jack Anderson, former national. Uh, Aaron Ashby wants a, they want a lot of, you know, he's on a big contract and they want some prospect capital for him. Um, Max Mayer is a guy I always like. See what, uh, see what they're looking for. Um, yeah, we could pick up Max. But we really only have one spot in this bullpen, if that. I mean, I guess we have a few spots. Let's see what they want for Jorge Juan. Okay, yeah, they're just looking to get rid of him. Free agent after the year. Um, I mean, he was really good last year, not so good this year. But, you know, he cuts down on the home runs. He's looking pretty good. So it would make sense, actually. But he's a good leader. I want to keep him. Um, how about... Clayton Beater is a guy in my 40. Yeah, we can go Clayton Beater. Clears a spot on the 40, man. And we pick up Juan. So yeah, they'll eat all the deal. Oh, man, I wish I could get my hands on Justin Lang. Fortunately, it does not look like we will ever be able to. Yeah, no. Not happening. Wow, this guy's sick. Third round pick in 2027. Nice. Uh, Mike Johnston, okay. Well, they uh, probably won't make this trade, but it's not impossible. Um, so Terrell Goffner is a guy I would like to maybe get rid of. Yeah, I don't think they're getting rid of Johnston. He's not a free agent yet. It doesn't make any sense. Christian Waldrop. The guy they've been using as a starter, uh, you know, pretty poorly in Tampa Bay's last few years. He's still under arbitration, but getting expensive. Probably not going to get rid of him. How about Mike King? They throw in Mike King. Okay. 
And I, I, I love me some Michael King. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Yankees had to get rid of him this off season, but I do love me some Mike King. Still a good pitcher here at age 36. Um, you know, he's actually bounced around the league and come back to New York. Um, yeah, I mean, they'll probably retain some of this. Yeah, they'll retain 65%. That, that works for me. Um, do we even have to give up to Rogue Offner? Okay, yeah, so we got to give up something here. I'm fine giving up Goffner. Uh, he's 23, bad personality, very redundant with uh, Bezalis. I thought she figured that out. But yeah, we'll pick up two bullpen arms. And just have to pay a little bit of money and a decent prospect. Um, not a nothing guy by any means. So, I want to keep Allman on this team. I think we'll send down Leon Diaz. His control has just been too much of an issue, I think. So we'll throw Juan up here. I think I'll throw him as the closer. Evan Reifer hasn't really proved himself yet. Um, then Melenge I'd like to keep just because he's a lefty out here. Church has been good. You know, really good. Uh, Reifer, it's been good enough. Almond have options. He's out of options. Maybe I'll just wait. <laughs> I'll wait the seven days or whatever it is. Um, maybe someone will get hurt and it'll be really obvious what to do. So they're still looking to get Whitlock here. Uh, now they're looking at Lusk, which I'm definitely interested in. Let's check out this trade. So they'd eat 25% of the deal. It'd be Gabe Darcy, who I'm fine giving up. Al Moser, who I don't love giving up, but that's fine. And then Lusk, who is number 132 in baseball, our third-ranked prospect. But the movement controls are, are obviously uh, a huge, a huge thing with him. Oh, yeah, so... They offered me this trade. I don't even think they'd do this normally. Um, this pushes us right up to the cap uh, with money. You know, do I even have a spot for him? I guess you take Phil Wick's, Wick's spot. I mean, that would completely solidify us as title contenders. He's had a couple really good seasons. He's fragile, but who cares? He's on a one-year deal. Um... And yeah, I mean, if we're going for it this year, let's let's really go for it. Uh, and Lusk is not really a long-term piece. He's more of a trade chip. It's a matter if I want to use the trade chip right now. I'm going to look around off camera. <laughs> Make sure this is the right deal if we do decide to do it. We'll come back with anything uh, that we find. All right, so there might be some pushback on this one, but... Uh, this is just one of those guys that I've always liked during the save, um, and th most of OTP saves that I've, you know, gone through. And Colson Montgomery, you know, a guy who's never put less than, I guess, a 124 WRC plus in a full season. Uh, not counting his first two years, but yeah, I mean, the dude's super consistent, putting up a 129. Uh, the ratings don't look that impressive, but um, he could be a really good first base, third base could play some left field, some right field, maybe. Um, I don't really know where we're going to put him. we got to find a way to put him in this order. Uh, you know, probably pushes Daniels out of the, the lineup and sit JC back to first. Um, but we have a lot, of, a lot of corner, first base, DH guys. So, um, but, I mean, we're, we're still seventh in run scored. Like, we need a bat in this lineup somewhere. So, I think, you know, Vino will probably get pushed out. Um, and we'll we'll find a way to get Montgomery into the lineup. Um, we're just giving up Ergeson Lux, Lusk, uh, who we've talked about with the movement issues, whatever. I don't need to go into it again. But yeah, Montgomery is under contract for this year and next year. Um, they're going to be eating 50% of the deal. So uh, we'll have him next year for $9.3 million, which is important because Corey Seager's uh, contract is up. Possible we re-resign re him, but um, yeah, he is wrecked at this point, so... 
Um, something to keep in mind. But yeah, um, I think this gives us a third baseman for next season and a utility, you know, just really good hitter for the rest of this year. Um, and, you know, I I think this is one of the best teams um, maybe ever put together. Uh, and yeah, our fan interest goes up again. We're now at 100. Um, you know, season tickets, attendance, revenue, still all really down, but uh, hopefully that improves uh, now with a couple of big acquisitions here. But yeah, I'm going to uh, set the lineups. Um, I guess we could just go right to the deadline here. Uh, actually, let's go through and kind of see where Montgomery fits in this order here. So, don't really want to give up Zach or get rid of Zach Veen yet. Um, he has had a really good season. Uh, 108 WRC plus, but on a nice little run. Um, hit really well against righties. You know, maybe Joe McCall is the guy to go down. Um, he's been pretty disappointing this season. Only a 6% walk rate with that eye. I mean, not really going to cut it. Um, and we have Bazal Basilace up, um, who I like a little bit more and can play some better outfield. So I think it's actually Joe McCall going to get sent down, unfortunately. Uh, he'll be back up in rosters expander if we have an injury, but but yeah, Montgomery will get added to the roster here. So um, he is. Let's see. Oh, I got to figure out how we're gonna align this defense here. See, so JC's not an outfielder. Daniels can play some outfield. Montgomery can probably also play some outfield. Um, yeah, the outfield defense is a little sketchy at this point. But I'm going to try Colson Montgomery out there. <laughs> uh, I guess we can go with Brock Daniels. At least he has some experience. Um, all right, we'll throw Brock Daniels out there. Uh, we'll put Mo Montgomery at third. So JC at first. At least our infield defense is better. And yeah, we'll throw Montgomery probably right into the leadoff spot. 9% uh, walk rate. Definitely will play. Um, trying to figure out how we're going to line this, figure out this lineup. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll still have Veen mix in. Uh, you know what? Veen can actually start against left, uh, against righties. We'll have Daniels mix in a bit. Also mix in at DH. Uh, actually, maybe not. Sorry, this is very difficult for no reason. Uh, okay, so against lefties, I still want Montgomery in the lineup. It works if we just want to put him at at third. Do something like this. Put Carroll out and left. Yeah, that makes yeah that makes perfect sense. Um, don't really have a leadoff hitter. Um, something like that. Something like that looks pretty good. Um, okay, yeah, so that's the lineup. Those are the lineups that we'll run into uh, the post-deadline um, season with. Um, this is the bullpen, I guess, we're going to roll with. Uh, it's a little shaky, but, um, you know, maybe... You just look at one more trade. One more. I just want to make sure this is the right team going into the second half because it always feels like we get screwed. I'd give up Mike Balding, actually, in this deal. Although we should give up someone on the Major League roster, maybe. Um, this is a lefty, so that's good. Uh, I don't know if he's really better than the guys that we got. Nah. Yeah, I think we're I think we're gonna roll the dice going into the second half with this team. Uh, it's a good team. Don't get me wrong. We're the best team in the in the league. Uh, made a couple of huge pickups here at the deadline. You know, rebuilt this lineup really. Uh, and Seager will be back in a month and a half, and um, we'll figure we'll figure the lineup stuff out then. But yeah, that'll wrap up this episode. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.